Why, hello. All my tingly little future hackers. Nothing gets me more amped for a hack sesh. Like some ASMR. Exploitation, exploitation. Just doing some of your favorite triggers today. Totally working for me. Take some notes, GB. Privilege escalation. Privilege e <laughs> exploit. Speaking of getting the tingles, this just came in for me yesterday, and you've got to get yourself one. This is a brand new. Red Team Field Manual. This is my own personal copy. I actually take it everywhere. Use it all the time. Welcome back to another Hacking 101 video. Today we're talking about methodology, the whole life cycle of a compromise, the anatomy of a hack, if you will. The entire process from start to finish from a bird's eye view of how to pop a shell and what to do with it once you've got one. Let's do it. get started I just want to quickly talk about the relationship between a vulnerability and an exploit. A vulnerability is just some kind of hole or flaw in the system that can be taken advantage of. That could be a bad password, weak encryption, unsanitized input on a website, leaving the guest account enabled, or something more complicated like a memory leak in an application. On the other hand, an exploit will take advantage of a vulnerability and use the system in a way that's unintended by either the creator or the owner. For example, in a house, you have a door, which is where people can come in and out of the house. You also have a window, which lets sunlight through, but you can also open it to get some airflow. Now, if a robber opens your window and comes into your house from the outside, he is using that window in an unintended way. The windows are not meant to be a point of entry for people. That's what the doors are for. This means he is exploiting the use of a window, which in this case makes the window a vulnerability. The same thing goes for computers. There are lots of ways to misuse legitimate network functions in order to gain access to a network. The simplest example would probably be passwords. Passwords are used to authenticate yourself to a computer, to prove to the computer that you are who you say you are. The intended use of that authentication system is to make sure that only you can get into your own account. But if someone can guess your password or crack it with some tools and get authenticated as if they were you, that system's been exploited and they've used it in an unintended way. Outside of misconfigurations and bad passwords though, vulnerabilities are just flaws and applications that can be taken advantage of. Long story short, find the vulnerability, match it with an exploit. There's a methodology for that. This is the general methodology taught in most certifications like CEH and OSCP. Reconnaissance, scanning and enumeration, exploitation, persistence, and clean up or cover your tracks. I promise to dedicate a full video to each of these steps very soon, but for right now I want to go over them briefly and give you an idea of what they each entail. Reconnaissance is gathering information about your target before you ever send a packet directly to their network. This step generally doesn't require any technical tools because you're doing things like googling your target. Go look at their website, go find contact information, find their socials, find videos they've posted online, anything that gives you an idea of what they do and how they do it. If your target is a company, go look at their job postings. Companies unknowingly provide way too much information about their networks and job postings. This will come in handy when you're looking for vulnerabilities later on. Mm. Black SUV, female driver, wearing a lot of drab colors, so we'll call her Mrs. Peacock. Sometimes it's even worth going on a stakeout, AFK and IRL. This may require going outside. Observing a company's activities on site can help you figure things out like 
Who works at the company? What time will network traffic be heaviest? What time will network traffic be lightest? When is it least suspicious to log onto a network? When is it most suspicious to log onto a network? Are there security cameras on site? Do people wear badges to the office? Is there a security guard? What kind of locks do they use? What kind of computers are at the front desk? When does the network admin come to work? Are people allowed to have their phones in the building? Do people leave important papers laying face up in their cars? And when is the sysadmin least likely to be sniffing around his own network? Oh boy, someone's coming. Oh boy. Oh, dip, oh, oh boy. No. No. Dumpster diving can also be surprisingly fruitful. Just make sure you're not breaking any laws or rules of engagement when doing this. But one man's trash is another man's recon. Oh look. Tax form. Now I know your social. Last but certainly not least, you can look up a domain's registration information online using ICANN or Whois Lookup. This can give you information like IP addresses, contact information, and other details about when the domain was registered. Next up is scanning. Scanning is when you finally fire up Kali and get to send actual traffic to the target network. Every network and computer responds to traffic in a certain way based off of what kind of computer it is and what applications are running on that computer. If you don't know anything about TCP IP or the OSI model, you need to, like yesterday. So go read up on it. The basic idea here is you wanna know what operating system's running and what ports are open. Then you wanna figure out which applications are running on those ports and hopefully find the versions of each. Is your target hosting a website? Is it running a database? What version of database is it? At this point, you're looking for specifics. More on why in the next step. Nmap is easily your most popular tool for this. It can do all kinds of port scans and host identification. It even has a scripting engine that allows you to check if a system is vulnerable to certain exploits. You can also use tools like Durbuster and Nikto to directly scan and enumerate websites being hosted on your target. Manual banner grabbing with Netcat is another great way to investigate applications. This is basically calling out to each port and seeing what they have to say. Normally, the applications on open ports have some kind of welcome message or hello prompt that tips you off to what the application is and what version it might be running. The next step is everyone's favorite, exploitation. Exploitation. Exploitation is where you find exploits for the vulnerabilities you've found thus far and execute. There are a few databases that become very critical for this step. Every publicly released vulnerability is tagged and sorted with an identifier called a CVE short for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. These are mainly managed by MITRE at cve.mitre.org or by NIST in the U.S. National Vulnerability Database. Searching these databases for the specific version of application running on your target will tell you if there are any known vulnerabilities associated with that specific version. Even more useful, though, is a place called ExploitDB, a CVE database maintained by OFSEC. Yes, the guys who make Cali. <gasps> ExploitDB matches these vulnerabilities up with working exploits for each CVE. Yeah, it's a good time. Unfortunately, it's not always as easy as scanning for version numbers and Googling for exploit code. Especially if a system's kept up to date, there may just not be any useful CVEs for your target. But there's always another way. Misconfigurations and bad passwords are actually the most common way to get yourself a shell on target, even though they don't really map directly to a CVE. You might just have to crack a password. Or you might have to spoof some data onto a web server's logs before using local file inclusion to get your malicious code to run on target. But if all else fails, you can always social engineer someone into giving you credentials or installing a backdoor. Humans are consistently the weakest link in a system's security. I may or may not have written a thesis on the topic. With a little critical thinking, you can find a way in. Whatever it takes to pop that sweet, sweet shell. Persistence refers to being able to get back onto a target later. If something happens to you and you get kicked off a box or lose your shell for some reason, you need a quick and easy way to get back on your target. Sometimes exploitation and persistence are actually referred to as gaining access and maintaining access. The old gain and maintain. The last thing you want to do is be exploiting an unstable application over and over again just because you've got a shaky connection. Getting persistence is the best way to avoid this problem. 
Usually this means creating some kind of backdoor or some kind of binary that will beacon back to your Kali box from time to time. You can also just create a new user that you could log in with later. However you decide to do it, just don't open the target box up to further compromise in the future. If you create a new user, give it a good password. Don't turn on any anonymous users or create any gaping holes in the firewall or the security settings. The last thing you want to do, especially on a penetration test, is invite other attackers onto your client's network and cause an unintended breach. Cleanup, which some certifications refer to as cover your tracks, is literally where you clean up after yourself and cover your tracks. This step is wholly dependent on two things, what your objectives are for attacking your target and what you've done so far. In some situations, you may want to clean up in order to not get caught, to literally cover your tracks, so to speak, so that no one can figure out how you got in. Did exploiting the box leave a bunch of entries in the logs that will point you out? Did it leave any breadcrumbs that would lead a sysadmin to find you? In that case, you may want to clean up as soon as possible in order to stay hidden. But clean up also refers to the very end of an engagement as well. You want to leave your client's machines exactly how you found them. That means remove any tools you may have uploaded to target, any exploit code you may have generated, scripts you created, back doors you implanted, and obviously make sure there's nothing left that could impact the security posture of that machine going forward. If you packed it in, pack it out. As you go through this methodology, it's important to consider what your overall objectives are. Your goals will depend on a lot of different factors, but as your goals change, so will your methodology. Does your client just want you to get access to the network and then stop there? If so, then just pop a shell and clean up and get out. There's no reason to get persistence. What if you are on a long-term engagement and plan on sneaking around a network for three or four months? You might be really particular about your persistence and your cleanup. Are you just pen testing or are you red teaming alongside an actual blue team? Sometimes it's best not to clean up at all, so the blue team can find your breadcrumbs and know what to look for in an actual breach. Are you working on live production servers or just a test network? This will affect the amount of risk that you're willing to take with your exploit choices. Sometimes you need the precision of a scalpel as you carefully make your way through a network. But if you're competing in a capture the flag event, just go with the chainsaw. Rip that network apart and take no prisoners. That's it for our overview of the general methodology. Next we can take a deep dive into each of the steps and spend a little more time on specifics. Just a reminder, Mount Doom goes live every Friday night on twitch.tv slash Mount Doom. Come say hi, let off some steam, ask me your questions about hacking and pen testing. I would love to chat about it with you live on stream. And as always, don't go outside. The resolution out there is terrible anyway. No HDR or nothing. Peace. Shoot him down. Get him! Get him for the win! Get him! Get him! Get him! Oh, that team's gonna be mad. GG, fellas. 17 kills. That's a freaking game. Get ready. Back to back, baby. That's two. Two. Back to back. Different teams. Let's go. That was a wild. Grand Pop brought it home. Not gonna lie. He wasn't messing around.